All right. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome to our fifth and final day of the five-day challenge. We're going to be getting into Groove Cart. We're winding it up. This is it. This is it. So come on in, have your questions ready so they can be answered today. Now, our coach is none other than Peter from New Zealand. He started his online selling journey way back in 2027 with experience in Amazon and eBay and proficiency in the groove cart also, which he has been doing since 2019. He's been doing his websites in there, his e-commerce development, it all speaks volumes. Now currently leading Groove Asia's groove cart training, that's what he's doing right now. Peter has a deep knowledge and hands-on expertise that makes him the perfect guy to unlock the full potential of groove cart. Now we are lucky that we have Peter here in our community that teaching us about Groove Cart and e-commerce because he wants you to get, he wants you to take action and to get started on building your stores so you can have another source of income for you and your family. So join us for this dynamic time. This is again the fifth and final day. Glad that you were here. If you have questions, please put them in the in the comment box so they can get answered and we'll be answering those things um, as we go along and put your hands together for virtual pause for Peter. Take away, Peter. Thanks, uh, thank you, everybody. Great to be here on the, 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 the fifth day. Actually, I could probably do another two more days, but I know when weekend's coming up and, you know, anyway, but I could go on uh, about the stuff forever. Uh, so the last day, now we got up to the point where I, I worked my way down the website. We, we got it as close to the one that we were being guided, uh, being guided by, and I said to you, you don't actually have to have it exactly like the like the example. So long as you're happy with the um, with the with the outcome of it or the layout, that's all that matters. But it's a good start, right? So having something to actually uh, go by initially is, is a good start. You can also do things like um, a wireframe. There's tools out there that you can use. You can actually create a wireframe, like say for instance, called uh, 3.5. Uh, and the artifacts, if you ask it to actually create a layout for maybe an e, e um, uh, like I was doing, like designer um, sunglasses uh, website to a layout for that, then we'll do a layout. But, you know, it's always good to actually have a sort of a live example um, to go by. And there are other actually um, sites or platforms that you can create a real, uh, a, a, a live look, well, a live website, and then you can get some idea. But I think you got more control when you're sort of like, um, you know, you're, you're kind of being guided by an, a sample or an example of a website. Um, and as you know, not everything on that website that we, can we uh, emulate, like the, the sliding in text and all that when it comes to GrooveCut. Um, maybe with group pages, if you did your homepage with group pages, and then all your other products for GrooveCut by simply putting links into the different sort of um, buttons or, or, or text that will go to the um, the products, then you can do it that way too as well, and have more flexibility when it comes to creating a um, a real sort of like standout kind of a homepage. But I did this one in uh, GrooveCart. I think what we've achieved so far is actually pretty good, reasonably good. Um, added a little, you know, um, I guess little uh, little frills in there, like the uh, overlapping um, the images onto the the next uh, section. Uh, and also as well as the sliding or the scrolling text. Um, now, in that text in the HTML code, wherever there is text that is showing up on the scrolling, that's where you replace with uh, whatever you want to put in there, right? So you don't have to use the same text. So just in the HTML code, just uh, um, simply replace it with whatever text you want to put it in. And then that way, then it'll just come up with the text that you want in there, all right? So, um, uh, that's how you use that HTML code. Uh, I trust everybody was able to connect with the uh, the, uh, the Google Sheets and being able to access the um, the pages here. So that's good. And so I'll just keep adding to that as well. So keep checking on it. You know, maybe once a week, but I'll be adding more. To, you know, because I do my own thing in the background as well. And when I come across different things that I quite like, then I'll just I'll put it in there. 
and then you guys can have access to that as well. So it's going to be something that will just grow out of time. And really, you guys are the only ones that have got access to that. Um, so, you know, um, that's because you've been part of this whole five day challenge. All right. So let me share my screen. Um, here we go. Where are we? Okay. All right. This is kind of where we're up to now. I mean, we did the whole builder thing, right? We did we did the builder. We haven't done the categories and we haven't done the product listing, but we're kind of like in the settings that I haven't been through just yet. So I really want to kind of not so much fly through that, but I just want to sort of get through that a little bit more, uh, you know, with a bit more speed today because you can spend quite a long time on all this. And I think, you know, people that have been in my other challenges or on my GLUs, uh, I, I've probably covered this stuff anyway, and you, you're a little bit familiar, or if not really familiar with it. Um, but if you do have questions, oh, don't see the screen. Oh, okay. Can no one see the screen? Oh, yeah. Okay, who said that they don't see the screen? It could just be me. Oh, is that you, Karen? <laughs> All right, okay. Geez, my host can't see the screen. Oh, anyway. Yeah, it's me. Okay, it's you. Yep. Uh, all right, so as you can see, the store information, payment, gateways, domain name, all that sort of thing um, is in there. And look, I, I did actually put on that, that uh, one of those Google Sheets, right, the resources, um, maybe how to get a domain name, a prompt for that, you know. So when you're actually uh, looking for a domain name, anything like that can help right that sort of takes a lot of the guesswork out or trying to actually wreck your brain for like an hour or so just to come up with a domain name you shouldn't spend too much time on a domain name right but you do want something that's catchy but avoid putting dashes in um and domain names because people don't remember that right when you say oh yeah my my website's at um you know uh funk, uh, funk dash my glasses sunglasses or whatever or my shades then they're not going to remember the sort of the dash thing you're just going to confuse them you just want something that's catchy uh, i wouldn't put i wouldn't have any more than three words in a domain name preferably two um but yeah so uh try and sort of keep it nice and simple and catchy uh and uh, that way then you know people will, will remember it and they'll be able to recall it uh we're going to cover shipping well shipping is pretty much quick taxes international Stuff accounts, so you see the list here, right? So let's just get started because it is a sometimes can be a boring, boring topic just going through the setting stuff. But anyway, let's go there now. I'm going to change. Uh, sick. Okay. All right. So when you come down here. Uh, you will start with all the settings. So store information, and um, like I said, some um, maybe if not all of you have actually seen me do this before. You can see here I put Evo sunglasses. Now I actually that's what I came up with before I actually uh, decide to go with the domain name that I, I I found or I came across. So I'm going to change that. So that's just going to go. Now this will still be your subdomain name, right? It won't be if I change it there. It's not going to change in the subdomain. It's going to stay as Evo Sunglasses dot uh, dot dot com. Uh, you won't be able to change that unless you actually delete the store. So um, in this case, I was kind of like just wanted to get some name up up there as a subdomain, and um, so I didn't go through the whole proce process of getting a domain name at that point. But it doesn't matter. And because at the end of the day, it's it's not going. No one's going to see it. Uh, uh, they're just going to see the the domain name that you actually um, did give it. So I'm going to put the name of the store in here. I'm going to go. Uh, let's make the shades. And like I said, that you know that name um, is not going to show up on the subdomain. I um. I don't think you should actually put a phone number in here unless you're kind of like a brick and mortar um, store as well. 
So if you, you know, if you have a, a shop as well as a website, then put the store phone. That's why it's not necessary in there. Uh, but you do need to put an email. So long as you've got uh, one or if, uh, one out of two contact details in there, now uh, you know, like I said, the email's best, and um, just leave the phone if you're not a brick and mortar. Now, what I would do here is um, obviously with the domain name, you do actually need a uh, email address that has got the domain name at the end of it. Right? You don't you don't want to have anything like you know, uh, Frank my phone at gmail dot com. It's not professional looking. So you really want to make sure that you um, you get an email account and. I would say do it for Namecheap because the email accounts are so so um, cheap that uh, you know it's not gonna it's not gonna break the it's not gonna break the bank. Always put in support. Don't worry about info. Don't worry about you know um, whatever. But just put support. Support at. So in my case, it'll be support at um, bunk my shades. All right. <clears throat> Notification e emails. This will be the one that you kind of check all the time. Okay. And you may not be checking the support at Funk My Face all the uh, Funk My Shades all the time. Uh, and in fact, you probably won't check it as much as what you would check your own um, personal email. So if you want to have notifications being sent to your personal email, great, because that will let you know that there's an email or someone's tried to send you a message. So that would be the email that you want to uh, that you want to put in here. So in this case here, I actually check this one most of the time. And if you can see, like, there's something going on with my keyboards because it's just put a um, it's put a Mac on it above um, keep high just automatically. Okay, so eQB online. So this is actually my um, Gmail email, but it doesn't matter because they're not going to see this one. This is only for my benefit. All right, address, I would take that out and I'll, um, I would just put like, you could put your region and or your state and the country. So say for instance, I want to put in Bay of Plenty. We could even put your city if you like, but I would put Bay of Plenty because that's our uh, region here. And then I would put um, New Zealand. Actually, I'll put Bay of Plenty. I'll put the postal code uh, 3010 and then, oops. Yeah, one a, and then I would put New Zealand, and then I don't know what's going on with this. There you go. Okay. All right. And that's it, really. That's all you need to do. You don't really need to go into too much other stuff. Uh, you can actually um, enable this. This is kind of like a um, just to make sure that you are human, all right? When you um, when when you actually uh, uh, signing up or registering for the for an account, but you know, you can put that in there if you want to. I'm just going to leave it off for now because it's not necessary at this stage. Obviously, um, upload your uh, upload your logo. Now, the logo in, in this case needs to be um, 500 um, both uh, both width or height under uh, well, 500 or less. Okay, can't be any more than that. And we'll actually start looking a little bit small if you go bigger, all right? Because it's trying to condense itself. So just um, stick to the size that it's got there. So uh, in this case, this one here is, a, I think it's about five, 500 by 140 uh, something, I think. So that, because it's oblong, right? So that's actually, um, that's right within the size. We're just going to save it before we go on to the next part. Okay, so it says here, valid email address. Oh, I thought that, forgot the dot .com. There you go. Okay. And then safe. All right, let's go on to um, let's go on to the um, next one, which is the local units. Okay, so for you guys who are over in the states, this is obviously would be um, already by default. That would be your time zone. I'm going to leave that like that because I I won't be selling this stuff in New Zealand. I'll be selling it in the states, although I can sell it here as well. You know. And if you remember yesterday, I said I'm kind of looking at the site as not a retail site, uh, but more as a, um, a like a supplier site to retailers. All right, that's what I'm looking at. So you can 
Yeah, so there's different things that you can do with these um, e-commerce sites. You don't have to just sell to the general public. You can sell to uh, retailers, especially if you're getting it at a good price. That site that I shared with you guys yesterday, I think the price is actually fantastic. I think there's an opportunity to brand. Um, they also have like small bulk buying, right? And what, what what's best about it is, and I, I haven't, I haven't actually looked into it properly, but what I think what they can do, and I'll probably reaffirm that maybe in the in the message or something to you guys, is that you buy bulk. Let's just say you buy twenty five uh, branded, um, you know, with brand branded with your logo on it on on say the bag of the um for the glasses or on on the on the case. <laughs> um, you get twenty five of those. They and they will fulfill the uh, fulfill the order for you as it comes, all right? So yeah, that's kind of like I got the impression. I'll confirm that with you. Um, but if they can do that, then you don't have to worry about getting it to you and then actually sending it out, all right? So I think that's where some of these guys are going with this um, with this whole e-commerce thing. Before traditionally. Uh, in terms of drop shipping, you just send out, you know, one at a time. Um, if you wanted it to be, um, if you wanted to buy bulk because it was cheaper, you'd have to send it to a fulfillment center. Uh, but I think these guys would actually also cater for that, maybe for for, for price or not. I'm not too sure, but um, I will let you guys know and I'll confirm that. Uh, stock management, we really don't need to actually have this on at this stage. Um, because there is no way that we're going to be able to integrate with their inventory, All right? So uh, it's it's really up to you to manage that side of it because we just don't have uh, a direct integration with um, this crowd, which is you know kind of like um, yeah, it, it's it just means doing a little bit more work. But in the earlier days, it was a lot harder than this, uh, a lot more manual, if you like. Um, you don't want that on. You don't want to um, have people order without a stock. So we just leave that out because you're not actually doing stock management anyway, and you don't need to see either because we're not we're we're not going to be able to link up with the inventory. Let's just say that. And move on. All right. So next one is uh, store access. At this stage, um, you you know you you really don't want anybody stumbling across your your web page. So you really do want to disable it. I'd say you do that here. I'm probably not going to disable mine. I want you guys to see the, um, I guess the the progress because you guys have got the link um, through the um, to the to the live view. Uh, I'll I'll leave mine on, but for you, I suggest that you disable it. <clears throat> now the thing is, if you still want to see the live view, then you want to add your IP address. Now, if you don't know what it is, you don't need to know, all right? Because you just click here. And it'll actually discover your IP address. And there it is, right? Um, so it can be a little bit confusing because people think, oh, I've got put, what's what is my IP address? You know, and then I've got to just click on that and it will add my IP address. No, it's the other way around. Just click on that and it'll actually discover it before you put it in there. Um this here, uh, enable private access, all that sort of thing. All right. Ideally, that would be if I'm doing this as a say a supplier site, then I would actually it will be uh, by um, login only, and I would, you know, like when if I get a supplier who wants to actually purchase from me, then obviously only when I click on customer and um, and uh, you know I I um, I give them the login details, then they can actually log in, uh, but general public won't be able to. Um, won't be able to uh, log in. Uh, the other thing is too. Here's the other thing. You can actually do it as a, a a dual purpose. You can sell to the general public as well as to sellers. Um, it's just that you will have um, maybe a special login for these guys, for the ones that are actually suppliers. Ah, uh, sorry, retailers. Uh, you can put details here, page title, page description. So I'm just going to put make. Um, in construction, probably best to put in website in construction, but I'm just going to put that there. Um, you can probably put maybe an email address in there. Um, our website's coming soon. If you need to contact us, just put the email address in there. I'm just going to leave that empty. Okay. 
Okay, you're going to save that. Obviously, we're not going to delete the store. So, but if you do want to, or you go in there, you must type this in or just copy and paste, put that in there, and then delete the store. But in this case, we're not doing that. Okay, let's move on. I'm just going to click save again just to make sure. All right, next one <clears throat> payment gateways. Now, I think every one of us are familiar with like PayPal and Stripe. And this is where you can um, put it in here. You have got the opportunity to actually um, go for the Groove Pay. Um, personally, I don't know many people that actually have gone for that, but you know, I I, I wouldn't I wouldn't know. But it just sort of attracts, uh, you know, a, a bit more lower percentage, if you like. Uh, only people in the states can actually um, apply for that. No one outside of the states can actually um, apply for it. And I think you guys would know if you need to connect, all you got to do is you got to do it by, um, you know, like the, uh, what is it, secret, secret P and all that sort of thing, and you put it in there. So just because I made it active active, or activated, it doesn't mean that it is active. I, I do actually have to put it, uh, say, say publishable key and secret key for Stripe. All right, that's for Stripe. Uh, it's a bit different for PayPal. I'll make that, I'll activate that. And then uh, PayPal would be simply logging in. I think that that's how they do it. So connect to PayPal. It'll take, in, take you to the login part where you log into your PayPal. Uh, it won't actually open up the account, but because you put the, uh, the username password in there, um, then it will actually connect it, and if, if it's correct, obviously. I won't do that just yet, but that's it, really. If you've got any of these other ones that you use, and I think these are simply uh, there because there are some countries that don't actually have PayPal or Stripe, and so this gives them an option to actually, um, they may have the authorised net or they might have something else. And that's as far as I know why those are there. All right. Um, other than that, uh, most people use PayPal and Stripe. You can only use up to two. I do recommend use two, not one. Um, so if you've got Stripe and you've got PayPal, then use them both. Um, that way then you always got a backup in case one of them fails or you know doesn't doesn't connect properly. All right. Okay, let's go back to here. Domain, like I said, uh, I did actually put something on that sheet where you could try and find yourself a domain. And once you've got that domain, it's a matter of actually linking it. So what will happen is, is that all your available domains that you actually have in the domain manager, right, will all be there. The ones that are actually available um, the, um, will show up in here. The ones that are, have been used will show down here. So used domains, these are already connected, and these ones aren't, all right? So, um, uh, you simply link link the domain with the with your website that you're actually working on, and it will just uh, yeah, link them both up. All right, easy enough. That one is easy enough. Shipping. This is always um, something that people go think about with shipping. You know what? How do I? How do? What do I? What do I charge for shipping? You know, and it can. There's a lot of variables. There's weight. There's size. Um, you know, is the, and then you know, there's also like um, shipping outside of the US, if you're shipping outside of the US, that is, I recommend if you're getting into e-commerce um, and you're, you know, you're kind of sort of new to it, or you know, you, you're you're toying with the idea to get started. Always, um, always start with um, uh, with uh, you know, like lighter up um, items, items that are not so heavy, they're co compact in size, you know, like sunglasses, uh, and um, and that um, you know you can just ship within the US, and it's not going to cost you a lot. That way, then you can add the cost of shipping within the US. And I know if you're in the US to ship anywhere in the U to the states in the US, a lot of them have the one price, right? Just the one price. It doesn't matter which state you're in; um, they have the one price. If only if it's um, in Hawaii or um, you know um, Alaska, right? They won't ship. Um, for the, the the set price, it'll be a bit more than that. Uh, but all the others, yeah. Oh, this we'll get to the states anyway, and I'll show you what I mean. 
you guys um, over in the States uh, work in Imperial. Uh, over here in New Zealand, we work in um, uh, metric. But if I'm selling in the States, I'm just going to keep everything um, as default. Uh, so that's all good. Uh, now, we can skip this page uh, if shipping is free. And that's what we intend to do. Let's just make it easy. right? Let's say that, move on. And you know, like you don't mind giving away free shipping, especially when the item's not that big, um, you know, and it's fairly light. Okay, so additional um, shipping fee. Obviously, we don't need to worry about that because we're not going to be um, sort of calculating what the shipping fees are. We don't need to. And then we go shipping methods. Um, now, you do actually have to add a shipping method. Otherwise, on the um, checkout, you won't be able to get past the information part. It won't take you to the next part, which is the shipping, and it will be free shipping, right? So uh, in this case, I'm just going to uh, put in here free shipping. And description, um, free shipping. Uh, free shipping within the US in the US. All right. Uh, you can put a logo if you want to of the um, the shipping thing, but because it's free, and we don't know who the who the courier is going to be. It doesn't really matter. Uh, uh, this stuff here, don't we need to worry about, and we don't need to worry about this, right? Because it's all free shipping, and that's kind of why I um, when I um, this, when I, you know, um, use this as an example of a website I had in mind was because of, of the uh, product that we can sell or you could sell to keep it nice and simple, right? So that all these other factors that come into it, like the free shipping and that, it's not going to be a bother because, you know, it's not going to cost a hell of a lot for shipping uh, and it will actually ship within the US. And we got... All right. I, why can't I see chat? Okay, so, all right. All right, let's move on to the next one. Taxes. Ooh. <laughs> uh, everybody's favorite subject. Right. There's a reason why you can toggle it on and toggle it off, right? And the reason is if you're getting if you're just getting into e-commerce you literally haven't made anything at this stage right there's no reason to declare it especially in here in new zealand um to be quite honest you don't actually have to have um a um, a limited company which is the equal to your llc until you're actually earning over forty thousand new zealand dollars per annum all right and that's when you have to register as a company but we're not talking about New Zealand, we're talking about the US, right? And in the US, particularly with some uh, with some suppliers, they want you to fill out a, uh, I think it's a W-8 form, um, which basically means is between New Zealand and U US, there is a, an agreement, right? And um, the US can charge us or charge me with holding tax in lieu of, right? And um, and basically, you know, my accountant has to take care of all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Uh, in some cases, it's not. In other cases, uh, it, there isn't. Um, I don't think we have a free trade agreement um, with the US at this stage. Uh, I know that New Zealand has actually been um, trying to sort of like, um, uh, you know, get that free trade agreement. I know we have one with... Um, the uh the uk i think but not with the um us anyway doesn't matter all right we do actually have one with china by the way but in any case you're just starting out leave it off you don't need it all right and still you start until you start making like ten thousand dollars a day or something like that uh something you know like um and that's possible but until you start making really good money out of it then you probably want to think about going to your accountant and going hey I need somebody to guide me on this and um, what should I do, all right? But if you do it, enable it, you will see there's all these recommendations that I can, I can manually enter my tax rates 
Um, or if you're in the United States and Canada, you can automatically calculate the taxes. Um, and there's also the, the, the use the tax jar. Now, I don't think this is available to people outside of the US anyway. So if I was earning a bit, quite a bit, then I would probably have it in manually um, enter tax rates. But again, you know, it's um, it gets a little bit complicated. You do need to consult an accountant, all right? But I'm going to leave that off. And I suggest you leave it off too as well, for now. International, okay, now this can be a little bit of a gray area. And, you know, when I haven't done this, if I haven't done this for a long time, it starts to get a little bit uh, confusing again because there is things in here that you you, you need to uh, understand. Okay, so the currency is just the um, whatever currency you want it to be. Okay, at the moment, you've just got euro and US dollar. Keep it at US dollars. Just keep it as the default. You can enable all currencies. So you've only got the euro or the US dollar for default. Um, default, Or you can enable all currencies, which you don't want to, because here they all are here. You don't really want to enable. If you just sell in the States, keep it simple uh, and don't sell anywhere else. Just uh, sell in the States for now. If you want to delve outside of the States because you're more confident now to scale um, and you know enough about the business and about how things run and all that sort of thing, then you can start putting in other, other um, currencies. But there's no need to if you're not selling outside of the US, right? Um, it's already defaulted to um, like the US and the euro, but we're going to take the euro out. I'm simply going to just click on that, on the tick, and let's take that out. All right. Okay. Let's move on to the next one. Now I'll save that before. Oh, yeah. Has that been updated? Just make sure. All right. So this is where the tricky bit happens. Um, people kind of get a little bit confused with it. I did for a long time. I got confused with it. But zones, all right? So zones are basically North America, all these sorts of things. Like, like, I would say they're kind of like, um, yeah, like I come under, New Zealand comes under Oceania, all right? But really, we're just selling in North America. That's all where we're selling, okay? So we're just going to take turn all of those. We're going to select everything, all right? So we're going to go down here, and we're going to select all. And then we go back down here again, and then we're just going to go disable selection. All right. Once that happens, we go up to, or we deselect, or unselect, I should say, then go to North America. You can either go here, or you can go over here, or you can go here, oh, sorry, or you can go over here on the cross, and then, then actually enable it. And just keep it at North America. All right. That's done. Right now, there are um, so countries. Obviously, I mean these are all all being selected now. If you were to actually get rid of, like, I mean, look, it's two hundred and forty-four results, right? And if you were to go through that, and you know, I mean, you could de de deselect them all if you want to, um, mm -hmm. but you know, at the end of the day, so you've got here like Europe. Ah, uh, sorry. I mean, look at all this. We've got Europe, and it's all ticked, right? It's all ticked. But the thing is, in the zone, you selected North America. So it doesn't matter if any of these are ticked. It just counts them anyway. It's kind of like a filter, right? So when you when you select North America as your um, uh, zone, then everything else in here is irrelevant. It doesn't actually register, even if it's ticked, right? Okay, so we, we can leave that. We can leave it. So hopefully everybody understands that. States. Now, in North America, yeah, like I said, there are states that uh, attract higher delivery costs, and you want to avoid those. All right? So let's, we want to um, we want to leave uh, Alaska out. We don't want to deliver there. And then we uh, – actually, I should have actually got the multi-choice, but we go down, we come down, and there's Hawaii. We don't want to deliver there. And I think there's one more state. And if someone can help me on this one, um, as I go down the list, I'll just go to the next one. You see how, how many states this has got? Because it's got all these other countries, by the way. All right. 
we're not going to go through the whole 3,973 results, right? We only really got Puerto Rico. That's it. I, uh, Puerto Rico. Is that on the next page? Yeah. There we go. All right. Uh, yeah. Right, so we've still got like, so is the Virgin Islands? No, the Virgin Islands is another one, isn't it? I know I've been told that the District of Columbia is actually um, in there. Uh, I'm just going to do those two. Uh, oh, okay, hang on. No, I don't, yeah, I'm just going to do those two. I'm going to leave the district. Um, I'm going to uh, undeselect those. Hang on, where am I on this one? Hang on, let me just go back. All right, so the ones that we're going to be delivering to are selected. They got the tick. The next one is, is we need to actually um, also um, uncheck or untick Puerto Rico and uh, Virgin Islands. So we just go there, up there, and then we go down the bottom, and then we go uh, disable selection. All right, I know all the others are actually selected. When you have a look down... Um, when you go to the next page, did Hawaii get? Where's Hawaii? Didn't I just see Hawaii somewhere? Oh, there we go. See that actually stayed on. Uh, we need to take that off. So there's Hawaii and there's Alaska. I don't know why it stayed on. Oh, Alaska went off. So Hawaii, we need to actually do that one as well. So let's just click on here, take that off. All right, and when we go to the next page, all right, okay, we've actually uh, also disabled uh, Puerto Rico and US uh, Virgin Islands, but we've left the, the District of Columbia. And although we've got North America here, right, okay, we've got North America here, um, we don't have Mexico included, all right? So we don't actually have Mexico included and all that. So if we go uh, countries, so with the countries, um, they get discounted because they're not in the zone, right? If we go to uh, there's the US, US should be selected. Okay, I need, probably need to go towards the end here. Yeah, so United States, yep, that's selected. Okay, so what, what we really, all we're really worried about is so long as that's selected and we've got new, um, we've got the zone as being um, North America and then we've worked in the States, we've actually, out of the ones that are North America, we've actually taken out the ones that we're not delivering to which means all the others don't really, even though that they take, they're really not going to come into the equation. All right. So um, because it's North America as a um, zone, with all the countries, all the other countries are selected, but because we've only selected North America as a zone, the other countries are irrelevant because North America only exists in the United States. And when we um, when we go into the states um here then so long as we deselect the ones that we're not delivering to all the others can be selected all the other uh like say say for instance here if we go here you know mexico and all that but because we're in north america um and i think with, we're with the uh, mexico as well uh, we're United States. How do we do this? I know it doesn't actually include it. Ah, oh, no. Sorry. Sorry. Oh, it's Friday. Uh, someone's just backing me. Um, yeah. We'll leave it at that anyway. But I mean, it should actually, uh, it should actually register and filter everything out so that you end up with just North America minus 
the ones that we've actually taken out. Uh, and that, yeah, and Mexico doesn't get included into that, by the way. All right. All right. So this 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 just hold it there. We will we'll finish it on that one, and we'll save it. But you can see how this can get a little bit confusing, right? And um, I had it right in my mind before I actually uh, uh, spoke it out. But um, you can encounter one little thing, and you think, "Is that if I got that right or not?" You know. But I know it's right. Anyway, otherwise you'd be there sitting all day trying to get rid of the ones that are North America that have been Mexico. And you don't want to be doing that, right? Okay, let's go back to settings again and let's come down. Staff accounts, pretty straightforward. Now, uh, not a lot of people know this, but um, Group Card is built on Presto Shop. Have you heard of Presto Shop? Right? So it's built on Presto Shop. That's why it's separate from Groove Pages and all the rest of it. It's a different platform altogether. Right? So at the end of the day, it's built on Presto Shop. Um, and um, which means you're able to actually have separate um, admin or separate uh, user accounts for staff, so for BAs and all that sort of thing, all right? Because on the Groove platform, you can't exactly do that at all. You don't have multi, you don't you can't do the multi users. That's why people, you know, uh, asking when can we get, you know, um, um, you know, user accounts where people can log in and not actually see all my whole account um, because it's a different platform. It's their own platform. But for an e-commerce platform, they've had to use a different platform to actually and just label it, I guess, wait, label it, um, GrooveCut. No? And that's why at the moment there's a little bit of a um, thing. It's a little bit, they're going to be integrating GrooveCut or they're going to be putting GrooveCut on the same platform as um, GrooveCut through pages and all that, and so that we can do this whole AI thing, right? Um, but until then, it will stay like this. All right, so uh, this is just simple. Obviously, if you want to add a new employee, uh, a new user, you put their name, the uh, first, last name. They'll have a, um, they may have their own email address, which may be, you know, or you could give them a company email address, up to you. You, um, Create the password, all that, blah blah blah, and then over here, you just get, yeah, you know, assign them the position or the role that they will actually be uh, that they will have when they're um, when uh, when they log in. Right? Pretty straightforward. At this stage, I'm, I'm gathering not all of you are going to get anybody to be the user just yet until you actually get this all set up. But if you do get a VA or you do, you know, I mean, this is ideal if you've got a um, a book and mortar store. Right, um, as well, because you might have like staff members. Um, you might have staff members, uh, you know, you, uh, to do some of the work for you. Um, okay. I wouldn't worry too much about mail, mail templates. These all actually all been done for you. You don't need to worry about it. You don't need to. You don't need to sort of fix what's not broken or change change anything. This is all you know. All these things will um, populate, like first name, last name, email address, password, all that will populate itself. So that's all done for you. You don't have to worry about it, all right? So don't worry about that one. Um, this here, okay, if you're going to be tracking uh, the activity on your website, this is where you put stuff like your Google Analytics code, your Facebook pixel tracking, uh, your Facebook products feed now. Uh, and your Google uh, merchant product, um, uh, merchant feed. That's if, right? This is if you actually signed up for, and you, you generally have to pay for this, uh, to actually have a Facebook shop and um, to be part of the Google shopping as well. All right? But if you're not doing that at the moment, then don't worry about it. But these ones here, these two here, may be um, best to use, right? So the Google Analytics, uh, you need to set up a good Google Analytics account for this um, for your website, and um, yeah, yeah. And then you can actually also put your Facebook um, pixel tracking in there as well. Uh, but with the product feed and the, the Google feed, that's a bit of a monster. Um, to you know, you need to deep dive into that one. You can go down in the rabbit hole if you're not too sure how to how to implement this. So if you're going to do this, look into it. 
um, you know, there would be uh, some sort of fee involved. Um, but I think you've all seen like on the Google Merchant where, you know, like um, when you're looking for something, a product, and then you get all these images up the top and, you know, where you can get that particular product from. So that's your Google show, um, Merchant feed. So they're feeding your products into the um, in, into into Google, and the same with the um, Facebook product feeds as well. All right, that's where you put everything anyway. But just leave it because at this stage, it's not important that you do that straight away. I do recommend though, if anything out of all those, uh, would be this one here, Google Analytics. All right. Okay. Settings again, email marketing. All right. Okay, so with this one here at the moment, uh, we won't go too much into that, but uh, basically all the emails that they get us, um, that when people join up, they'll all populate in here. You can, um, you, you notice that it's not actually connected to uh, GrooveMail, right? There's no connection there, um, but, you do like these are some of the ones you're familiar with, like SendGrid, Clavio, um, and uh, Mailchimp. Or you can export your email list and then upload it into Gmail, not, um, and just tell it that you got this list from GrooveCut, and then it will actually accept it. Right, so you can do that as well. But you know, like I said, don't worry about that just yet. It's a good problem to have if it starts to become an starts to become a problem right? where you're getting a lot of emails. So um, until you get to that point, then it's not, not necessary to do anything. Legal pages, right? There is a little bit of manual stuff that you need to do on here. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, things like um, you got to make sure. Now, because I changed the name, and this is the thing, it would have been best if I started with the correct domain name. But because I changed the name, um, you see how it's still stuck with Evo sunglasses, all right? Uh, so I'm going to literally have to do a find and replace with all Evo sunglasses.groovecart.com. So simply just use my, um, I think it's my Chrome browser where I can, I don't know if it does a find and replace anymore. It does the find, but it doesn't do the replace anymore on Chrome. But there are some tools, extensions that you can get to the find and replace. Uh, so you find everything that is uh, the subdomain you don't want in the in the uh, terms and conditions and then you replace it with um like in my instance with um funkmyshades.com right that's what i replace it with so it's it's an easy thing to overcome but just have a look at the bottom of each of these and make sure that you put your address um well put your state like it says here put your state city of and whatever the name of the uh business it is don't put your phone number and just take that right out you don't need that in there all right and then you just put the um email address that's it that's all you need to do and even on the um even on the return policy um down here or refund policy uh oh it does you don't actually have to have your details here but yeah now all the stuff here um yeah you know, i would just put in a uh, sorry NA on, uh, we're not going to even, so we're just going to use the standard, which is the three to five business days. It'll probably be sooner than that in some places, but you're just going to take these ones out, right? You don't want to actually um, have those in there. You're just going to have free because that's all the only delivery that you're going to actually um, um, provide as an option. Uh, like I said, just make things simple. Um, have a read for all this. Make sure that you, you, um, uh, modify it to suit your business okay so you must you must read all the stuff in blue and make sure that you actually change the stuff that you need to change pretty it's pretty straightforward but yeah once you get to that point then that's what you need to do all right so that was settings and um look uh, we're actually um close to probably finishing but um i'm going to go over the products and um I'm happy. I'm happy to do at some point um, a one more session in the next week or two. If you guys are happy with that, because I feel we didn't really quite get to where we needed to get. We're, going, we're not going to get um, where we need to get today. 
um, because the products is going to be um, a bit of a um, thing itself. Then we've got categories. So let me simply just go over the uh, POD and dropshipping, and I'll just quickly explain this. All right. So these are the ones that we're going to connect with. Now, Honeycomb and Tiny Brander is not really integrated yet. And um, but I'll just tell you a little bit about it because you there's nothing there when you click on it to be able to sign up. It just wants you to log in. And because we don't actually have an um because we don't actually have a um uh, a way to sign up, then it means that it's not actually connecting yet. So they haven't um they haven't um done all that, sorted that out. But we do have Printify, Lulu, Printful, Dropify, which is probably something we don't want to stay down just yet. But Printful, Lulu, T Launch, and Printify. This is the extension for Ali Connect. If you're gonna put that on, you won't get it. Um, and it's not being supported anymore. It's only the ones that have actually had it on their Chrome browser for a long, long time. Can only use it, but even now when I use it, I'm finding this it's it's has its issues. Um uh, Tscape. Mm, yeah, Tscape's okay. It's it's pretty basic. But if you're going to use anything, if you're doing books, Lulu, if you're doing print on demand stuff, print for and uh, printed by T launch, and um, that's it really. Don't go to the layer app pretty much. I don't even know why it's still in there, but you can't even connect to it anymore. You can't even contact them. There's no, they don't, yeah, there's nothing. So it should be taken out, but don't go there. Hubcart is actually extremely expensive per month. I don't even know why they have that in there unless we're going to have some type of agreement with them. But the ones that I've just said, those are the ones that you you can actually um, look into if you want to. Um, what else we got here? Oh, sorry, products. Discounts, yeah. I mean, that's self-explanatory. You can create discount codes if you want to, like coupons uh, for people on their first purchase. Uh, if it's over $50 or whatever, if they get a 10% discount, whatever. You know, but you can actually create them here. Pretty straightforward as well. And um, categories, obviously, if you're doing like sunglasses, categories can be brands or categories could be eco-friendly glasses. Uh, pretty much like when you go to that site that I showed you here, you can go like, there's the collection. So cat collection and categories are more or less the same, all right? So aviator glasses, you can create all those different categories and put them in those categories if you want to. It's up to you. But, you know, if you're going to use the site, it will be a manual, um, it'll be a manual process. All right? And I'll just quickly, quickly, just give a little bit of insight to it because we'll finish it there and we'll, we'll finish on time. Um, but um, I'll just go through it, just the first part of it, and then we'll probably dig uh, go into a little bit more further. If you guys are happy to do a session sometime next week, um, we can schedule it. If you want to, just put a, a yes in the chat if you if you want to. Um, it'll be another hour, but then I might be able to cover things like um, you know even trying to get a product up and up and running um, so that you can start sort of like at least you have something that might be up. Okay, there's a few yeses. Okay, cool. I'll, I'm going to let Karen organise the time and all that, so that'll be cool. Um, if we go here, so I want to because this is going to be a manual process, right? You, you literally click on the product. Now, if you're going to go for this site, make sure you sign up with these guys and they approve you, right? Because you cannot use their images unless they do approve you, right? Because these images are pretty good resolution. If you click on them, they go bigger still. And then you simply uh, right click and save image as, right? And so they're actually really good size images. So you must make sure that you actually get verification that you've been an approved seller or retailer, whatever it is. And like I said, there's opportunities for wholesale, uh, retail, drop shipping as well. Uh, and there's also opportunities to actually do your own branding private label all those sort of things um but yeah at the end of the day look into that first i'd be like me i, I know i've actually put images on the site but this is a demo um, site and i will be 
going for an account anyway. I don't think it'll be that hard to actually get one. But if you have a look here, this is the information that you're going to be needing to copy into, well, not necessarily this, but um, the information here where it's got all this stuff here. Uh, there's not a lot, really, is, is there? There's not a lot of description here. But you know what? I, I don't know if you actually really need a lot of description. You really just need the specifications. Um, and you could probably try and get these icons if you wanted to and then put them in on, on your page. But I don't think you really need a lot of description. Maybe titles like they've got here. Uh, when you go into, like, um, say, for instance, when we go into a product page, you're going to have to have product. You could put something in there if you wanted to. And what you would do is that you go to ChatGPT, you, you'll put the image up into ChatGPT and ask ChatGPT to write you a short sum, a summary and a, a bit of a description about this product. And it'll do it all for you. So you can actually make um, the whole process easier. But we'll get that in. We'll do that into the next one. The next one it looks like everybody is all good for another session. And um, so we could call this a six day one. <laughs> six day challenge. Will that be just before the Monday coaching call? Oh, so Monday for you, Tuesday for me. I think so. What do you think, Karen? Can I let Karen sort it out and she can get back to you? <laughs> um, okay, cool. All right, so we'll do that, okay, because I do feel that we didn't really cover what I wanted to cover because I really do want to actually sort of give you an idea how you can get something up there and and, and start promoting it and, and get a sale at least. But, yeah. All right, let me just stop my screen. Okay, I've got a little bit of the news for you. And um, so, you know, pretty much every time we do like uh, something like this or we do a GLU, we're promoting the um, the uh, BTR or the, the Master One Retreat in Japan in November. It's not happening. Okay, I'm just going to tell you now, the, um, the ones that are part of the protege group in here will probably see a message. Tringyu will be actually putting one out. It's not happening this year. All right? But it will be happening next year. And um, we're going to sort of try to uh, um, announce it, like it's going to be probably announced maybe at the end of the month or even next month, but it'll give people six months to actually, if they want to be part of it, um, then, you know, they can utilize that six months to um, make, well, it's not confirmed yet, but make payments so that it's a much more easier on them uh, for the, um, uh, when it comes to, um, you know, paying for it. I'm not a fan of early bird, you know, and if the earlier, the cheaper, the, the closer you get, the more. And I think that's a strategy that, um, you know, that I, I would probably strongly oppose myself. And I think they will probably go along with that. But at the end of the day, that's what's what happening. So we're not going to, we're not going to bore you with any, um, <laughs> anything about the mastermind retreat. So just to let you know, uh, so um, a little bit disappointed. I know Karen is um, that we, you know, we're not going, but it will be bigger and better um, next year. And um, I know there's a few people in, in here in his shop in Shopee. Who knows? You know, if that all goes well, then we might be seeing you in Japan next next year. Uh, so anyway, with that said, I'd like to say thank you for joining me for well, not so much the last day now, um, but for the fifth day of the. Uh, Five day challenge or six day challenge. And Karen, we'll get back to you uh, um, when we can actually do the next one. But yeah, you may have to put maybe even a half, uh, an hour and a half aside just in case, right? So I'm just letting you know now, forewarning you. Um, but it will be engaging, interesting, and you know, um, informative. All right. Karen, you want to take us out? So thanks again, guys, for joining us, and um, have a good weekend. It's Friday here. I know it's Thursday there, but uh, have a good weekend, and we'll see you next week sometime. And bye for now. Awesome, 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 awesome. I want to thank Peter for these five days that he's given us so far, and we have one more to come, so definitely be ready, be prepared. We're going to might put it on the calendar and invite those who haven't joined. But since it is on our YouTube channel, 
okay, I'll put it on the calendar so other people can come. You know, if you haven't the review have the replay when it comes to day six you know we're gonna be far along so if you're gonna be joining us for day six you have this whole weekend to go through the replay on the youtube channel and you'll be able to catch up so when we do schedule that next week um it will be on the calendar at groovevision.cm forward slash events you'll have an opportunity to join us then it'll be right around the same time not necessarily the same days, but we'll pick one or maybe an hour earlier, an hour later. We shall see. Check the calendar. Check the calendar. That's what I um, recommend that you do. <laughs> yes. The, uh, you, it will be on the playlist on the YouTube channel. I've already created that already. So I'm just adding them as we go along. All right, then, until next time, until next time, I will see you then. Thank you, Peter. Everyone give Peter a round of virtual applause. Thank you so much uh, for your dedication and commitment in teaching us about e-commerce and Groove Cart. And until next time, see you later. Bye-bye.